Welcome to the Buy Box Experts Podcast. We bring to light the unique opportunities brands face in today's e-commerce world. Welcome to the Buy Box Experts Podcast. This is Eric Stopper. Today's episode is brought to you by Buy Box Experts. Buy Box Experts takes ambitious brands and makes them unbeatable. We've got a team of consultants, and I know that during all the hard times, anytime there's, there's any major economic changes, you're looking for help, you feel like you're drowning, you don't know where to look, you don't know who to ask, come and talk to us, we'll help you out, no strings attached. Go to buyboxexperts.com, click on the free analysis button, and you'll be connected with me or a member of my team. Today, I am pleased to be joined by John Tilly. He's the founder, the co-founder and CEO of a SaaS technology company called Zon Guru. They're an all-in-one tool set for Amazon private label sellers that helps scale businesses through data visualization and automation. John's been selling on Amazon since 2014 and is a regular guest on webinars and podcasts in the Amazon and eBay space. He is an avid motorcyclist, yogi, surfer, and technologist. John, welcome to the show. What's up, Eric? Good to, have, good to, good to be on this. I'm Absolutely. Happy to be here. So I have lots and lots of questions. Um, I have been on this hunt, this crusade to figure out who's got the, uh, the data visualization, the automation, the, um, the keyword research, the category research tools nailed. And I feel like everybody has a lot of pieces of it. And I'm, I'm hoping to find the, the eighth wonder of the world in, in terms of Amazon. And so where I want to start is just, is tell me, tell me what's different, right? Tell me the, the secret sauce of Zon Guru and why people should check you out. I love that. The, the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good thing to strive for. You know, look, I think um, in a nutshell with Zon Guru, I think, you know, we've, we've been in business since 2015, right? And, and our focus has been on how we can bring our business expertise as entrepreneurs to our customers. So uh, I think very early on, we, we, we realized that it's not just about being a software guru or a software developer and getting a bunch of data and presenting that to um, customers. It's about how you can, um, you know, uh, visualize that data, how you can translate that data into something that's very valuable for customers. So, so we've always from the beginning said our data needs to be accurate. Number one, it needs to be timely. Number two, and number three, it needs to be relevant. And relevancy is, is probably one of the biggest things that we have had to focus on and, and becomes more and more important as the business of Amazon has um, grown and, and, and developed over the years. So um, I think with Zonguru, your experience will be Number one, a great UI. I think everyone always gives us feedback. We, we have great UI. But number two, the data that you're seeing is visualized in a way that makes sense to business entrepreneurs. It gives you the right data at the right time in the right way um, and, and, and is actionable for, for your business. So we're really proud of that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have over 14 tools now that, that, that we have across each part of the, the Amazon customer journey. Um, but the data you're seeing is relevant and the way it's interpreted makes sense to sellers and is very actionable. So um, we're proud of that. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. So in, in our talks before the show, you... Um, you, well, you I make- want to say one other thing, just, just, to, oh, sure. to be, just to kind of be real and upfront. I think, you know, where Zonguri is in comparison to some of the bigger software players in the space, we're very comparable comparable if not better in a lot of ways. But I think the secret thing to, to Amazon and what a lot of the big sellers say to us is, uh, you know, don't tell anyone else. <laughs> we like the best kept secret because, hmm. um, you know, we have less than subscribers than some of the, the bigger tools out there. But the opportunities that people are seeing with our data, you know, most of the majority of sellers don't have access to that. So it's kind of the best kept secret for them. And they're like, <laughs> they always joke and say, don't tell anyone, <laughs> which is obviously <laughs> Sort of what we want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Tell them to uh, shut yeah. that down because uh, we we need some word of mouth <laughs> fire, right, to get it going. Yeah. Um, now let's let's dig into the weeds a little bit. Um, I want to talk about the company because I feel like you guys are running a really good shop that that does a lot of good. Um, but you mentioned the the critical importance 
of screening and tracking your customer's behavior through technology to initiate triggers to positively impact conversion, engagement, and retention, and of course, cash flow and lifetime value. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of folks that talk about tagging customers, using a Facebook pixel, tracking through storefronts, and just like getting to know who it is that's actually buying your products. And I honestly, I've played with all these tools and I haven't found one that's like, that really nails it. That tells me, look, uh, John in California is shopping on my Amazon page right now. What is John doing? What does John care about? How old is John, right? Like I haven't really found something that, that does all of those things. And I'm wondering how granular can I get with the Zonguru tools? How, how much information can I know about my customers and their behavior? Yeah, that's, that's a massive thing to unpack. And, and I think it is in, in a market as well, that's, that's the Mecca, right? So, so I'm glad you kind of gravitated towards that. Um, I think that um, the short answer is, is at a high level, we're, we're you know, as, as an Amazon seller per se, we're not there yet where we can track our customer's behavior um, to the degree that we want to, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that can already be done, right? And I think that um, there's even more data than we possibly could could access right now. And it's about making sure that you've accessing the, the right things and interpret it and using it for action on your business. So um, well, how I can relate to that, and, and, and I guess, you know, there's, there's the, the Amazon seller and what data they can get from their customers, right? Mm-hmm. Through Facebook and uh, demographics and, and, you know, third party demographics and, and really understanding their customer. Uh, and then on the other side, there's um, me as a CEO of a software company and how we track our users um, specifically in, in a subscription model, which is how can we look at the, the engagement uh, metrics, um, the, the retention metrics, and of course the cancellation metrics and how we can track our user behavior and, and understand, Hey, when they are doing X, Y, or Z or not doing X, Y, and Z, what does that mean for our customer? And are we actually, have we got a brand ambassador and someone who's really engaged or do we have someone who, who is um, about to cancel? Right. So, um, you know, our software per se doesn't for, for our end customer on Amazon seller, it doesn't necessarily give them more access to data around the behavior of their customer. Um, but certainly I can speak to it from, from our customers and, and how we track them and what we do with them. So you, you mentioned engagement metrics. Um, you know, I'm an Amazon seller, you're an Amazon seller. What, what can I look at? I mean, is there a special report that I can run that, that gives me customer, customer engagement metrics? I don't, I don't know what that, what that looks like and I want it bad, right? I want to know how, how well people are engaging with my, with my listings. Is that just a uh, click through rate? Is it, uh, impressions. How do you track customer engagement on Amazon? Yeah, I think I think the unfortunately the only the only access we really have is is the is the um, the PPC search term report. I think I think that's one of the the from an Amazon perspective that gives you um, the most access to your you know what keywords are, are, are customers searching, what um, conversion metrics are there, what what engagement is happening around your listing. So I think that's um, you know probably from Amazon's perspective, the, the, the report that will give us most insight into that. Now, um, you know, I, w- I would venture further is if you're truly wanting to understand your customer, you need to be doing some, some off of Amazon uh, marketing to get an insight into who your customer actually is. So, you know, obviously Facebook is, is, is a great one for that, understanding the demographics of your, your, your Facebook um, customer. Um, now, now we do we do add to that, and, and the way that we connect a lot of our Amazon sellers to um, you know to Facebook demographics is through a Facebook pixel. So through emails, uh, the customers receive. There's ways that you can add your Facebook pixel, so you can build that lookalike audience and understand a little bit more of your customer. But I think I think the advice I would give for for any Amazon seller is reporting or not, understand who your avatar is. Understand truly understand who your customer is. And, and that avatar. And the more you can understand them, the more you can connect with them on an emotional level, um, which will help with your conversion. So in your brand and, and, and everything else. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, th- th- there's different metrics, but, uh, but I think that um, 
a lot of the work up front needs to be done around the emotional understanding of your customer. And once you understand that, you can, you can better your product to suit them. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, for, for somebody like me, and there's a lot of folks that listen to, to our podcast that are just like, one is a one-man, one-woman shop, just selling products on Amazon, crushing it, kind of. Um, and for those situations, it, it has to come from me, right? I have to do the demographic information. I have to like make my assumptions and go through a list of what I think my, my, my uh, core customer looks like. Whose responsibility should that be in like a larger organization? Is it, should that come from the very top, right? The CEO and CMO sit down and talk about all the different customers and, and what they look like. Is that just from the marketing team? Is it just from the sales team? I want to help our listeners really like be cohesive in the way that they're approaching this issue because I, I agree a hundred percent. The more you know about your customer before you do anything, the better that you're going to do in your targeting in the way that you set up your listings. And so where should that come from? What's kind of like the, the best advice that you would give to these organizations as they start this journey of, of customer self-discovery? I think from a larger organization perspective, um, the answer is it, it should, it should to a degree be influenced by everyone in the, in the organization, right? I think the responsibility is the marketing department, but um, from, from my history or experience of, of, of being in marketing. Cause you know, I, I have a, a, a long advertising background. So this was, this was a lot that we did. Um, the brands that were most successful were very clear on their avatar so much so that they would have a board in their office with mm. a picture of exactly who that avatar is with a name, with, you know, just characteristics um, with a deep description of exactly who that person is or, you know, the three or four different avatars that they have. Um, and, and exposing it at that level allows, uh, you know, anybody to, to have the ability to influence or, or comment on what that is. Um, but I think that, you know, I see that so much now with, with anybody who's launching uh, an Amazon business. Um, this, if you don't do the work up front to understand who your avatar is and, and truly, you know, through Google surveys, even through, tools that we have, which really look at customer review. We have a tool called love hate, which, which um, looks at all the customer reviews for, uh, you know, for a product and then we'll, you know, uh, visualize that in, in, in positive and negative reviews. And what, what is the sentiment? What do people like? What do they hate? Um, you know, all of these kind of tools, if you don't do that up front, your journey down the road is much more difficult because your branding could be off. Your copy could be off. Um, the way that you can help with your conversion rate up front can be off and then you're just an uphill battle. So it goes all the way down, right back to the beginning is if you, if you get you know, garbage in, you get garbage out. You need to make sure you've got the right information up front. That, that love, hate, I heard you talk about that on, a, on another podcast. Um, the, the point of the tool is to aid the conversion side of things. Right. Is, is that the idea or is it to find keywords that people are searching for? Like what's the main objective of using the, the love hate tool? It's exactly the point of that is to understand your customer. Who is your end customer? You know, what, what emotionally do they like or hate about a specific product category? And number two, what are they, what are they, you know, components wise, product wise, product attribute wise, what do they love or hate about a, a category? And, and obviously one of the places to start is, is what do people write about that in the space? It's like a social listening tool to, to a degree. Yeah. A social listening tool. So I, uh, I have, I have some students that I, that I teach um, and I let them manage some smaller Amazon accounts too. And several of them use on guru um, and they, and they really like it. And um, one of them tried out the tool and d use the love hate sentiment tool. And what they found was that Amazon sellers when they're creating their listings are, are pretty awful at identifying the feature benefit kind of phraseology um, because their customers in the reviews, it's just across the board, right? Easy to use or fits as expected, right? Kind of really simple gauges of, of success and product quality and they're nowhere to be found. So I'm thinking if I'm to use the love hate tool, I would want to sit down and I would want to look at what my title and my first few pictures is telling the customer 
about the product based on those those love hate sentiment is it just a it's a list of of words that come out how, how is it viewed is it a word cloud what is it word like? cloud yeah it's it word okay. clouds it. yeah so it takes all the reviews and, and puts them together um yeah so so you know i, I think a lot you know and, and this is maybe going back back a few months but you know typically what a seller would do is is literally reverse look up someone else's listing or copy someone else's listing in the space oh, and use that and, so lazy you know, they, they, they all look the same and, and act the same and and I think if you fundamentally understand that Amazon's algorithm is based on, um, you know, they will go where they can make the most money, which is really tied to conversion rates. Your answer is there, you know, you need to look at things differently and be able to put together an Amazon page, put your products on there, your listing with all the other products on there and say, Hey, Mr. Jones, uh, you know, which, which product would you actually go for right, right here? And if they don't pick yours 90% of the time, you've got work to do. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's absolutely one of the, one of the key things. Now you've, you've talked a lot about finding a niche within a niche. Um, and I, and I love that. And I, and I completely a hundred percent agree and your tool gauges level of competition and like levels of revenue within the category. Um, I, and I, and I want, and I want to get to, to more of the details of how that works, but I'm really curious how, how Zon guru has applied that same, that same logic to your business. Is, is there a niche within a niche that Zon guru specifically is, is addressing in terms of servicing Amazon sellers? Um, because I, I feel like it's, you know, when I hear about people tossing around software, like, oh, I don't know if I should use this or this, they all seem like they kind of fall in the same bucket. And I haven't been able to clearly like categorize these different brand owners, except on things like level of revenue that they have and the amount of SKUs that they have. Is there a specific niche that you guys are targeting in terms of Amazon brands? Are you talking about our actual type of customer that we want to target or are you talking about, you know, our positioning? Uh, oh, um, I'm, I'd like to ask about both. Definitely. Yeah. Um, because the, I think the position depends a lot on the customer that, absolutely. that we're, yeah, that, we're, that we target. Yeah. So I, I guess the first one would be, you know, yeah, who we'll is the, the customer and then what do you, what do you tell to them? What's the message that you're delivering to them? Yeah. Um, our, t our niche within a niche in terms of our customer and, and I guess our golden customer is that seller who is creating or is wanting to create a sustainable long-term private label business that is ultimately a brand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get different types of, of Amazon sellers, arbitrage, people who are what we call more of the monkeys, which are just wanting to, you know, compete against people in a very, high demand category with not much differentiation and trying to bring in some, you know, offsite traffic and, and just going a little crazy and just trying to, you know, hustle. Um, yeah. and, and ultimately, you know, our end customer is who we truly believe in and who we passionate about, which is that person who has thought about creating that purple cow. I don't know if you've read Seth Godin's book, but, um, you know, the purple cow, the, the brand that stands out from the, from the rest that has true differentiation that is, that is really thought smart, smartly about how I can bring more value to a customer um, through my differentiation, um, but really thought about it, you know, from an entrepreneur's perspective of, you know, pricing, you know, it might not be the cheapest, it might be more expensive, but truly differentiating that product um, and building a moat around that product in that brand, and then scaling that with adding brands to that over time. That is our ultimate customer. And, ultimately who, who we want to support because we're passionate about it. I think that's, that's truly one of the best gifts that we have in today's age of, of being able to create a brand um, in, in quite easily and scaling to wealth. So I think, I think that's who our, our niche is and who we support. And, who, you know, when they look at our data, they nod their head and they're like, okay, this makes sense. Like the way that they've defined or validated this product idea is based on that. So, you know, that's truly who our customer is. Um, those people who wanted to hustle and arbitrage or, you know, bring in, you know, black hat tactics or gray tactics or whatever. That's not our Maybe customer. Not. We're not interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So it, 
it sounds like uh, people who, who want to diversify and build something long-term, reduce their risk and something that can, that can scale as quickly as possible. That, that's kind of the bread and butter of Zon Guru. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, we, we get the added, but added benefits of just seeing and hearing the stories of how people have freed themselves from, you know, financial freedom, you know, and, 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 and built an amazing business. Um, and, and that's just amazing to see. Yeah. Right on. Can you, uh, can you give me an example of, of someone that's really crushed it with Zon Guru? Yeah, there's, there's hundreds. I think, you you know, we, we, we have personal relationships with a lot of our, our customers and, um, there's stories from, uh, you know, women, uh, woman who, who was married, who, um, you know, uh, you know, got divorced, didn't know where to look, how to turn, who to rely on, uh, had kids and, you know, jumped into the Amazon space and, and through, um, connections with us and, and, and building a product a year or two later is absolutely, you know, a seven figure a year seller supporting her best life and her family and, you know, just, just grown. So I think, um, you know, clearly a lot of that is, is circumstance, but, uh, you know, when you really focus on it, you can have any background, any life situation, any education, any, any, anything, but as long as, you know, th- this at the end of the day is a, is a relatively simple business, right? And if you focus and you apply the principles that we teach um, and, and you just are consistent with it every single day and, and, and really put your, your 100% effort into it, you will absolutely have an amazing business in a few years um, and, and you can do it for sure. So um, we see a lot of those every single, every single day. Do you, uh, do you happen to remember what her brand was called? Let's give her a shout out. Uh, yes, but probably not worth disclosing. I know, I know people, people get a little, okay. little funky about that. So it's all yeah. good. Yeah. No worries. Um, if we, uh, if she's down for it, let us know. We'll put, we'll put her in the, we'll put her in the notes for the show. Absolutely. Um, so I saw, I saw a video you guys are doing, um, like this 2020, uh, million dollar, uh, next product, product challenge. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? I, I watched the video and, and I, um, I'm, I'm ready to register, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out it's, it's like a five video series that helps you select a product. Give me, give me the details on this. Yeah, I think ultimately it's a training series, which, which is saying, you know, how do you going back to that point of saying you need to find a niche within a niche, right? And, and Amazon is so, so much more of a sophisticated marketplace today. Um, it has sophisticated sellers, sophisticated listings, much more traffic, big brands uh, playing in that space. And if you go back to who our core customer is, which is that person wanting to create a million dollar business uh, in a private label capacity, those opportunities are there, you know, in, in, in massive amounts because you, you're ultimately selling a product where you have 350 million people buying products, right? But what you need is you need data and data visualization to actually pull back some of those layers to find that niche within a niche. And it's that smaller, less competitive, uh, you know, opportunity that you can grab onto that you can create a moat around and that absolutely in today's age will be a million dollar business for you, but you have to be able to find it. And so um, that training really starts with, with using some of our product research tools, which are, we've actually just launched a brand new one called the, 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 the niche finder, uh, which, ultimately is a, is a product database type of tool, but anybody who's in the space, you know, uses product database tools that, that are, that are in place by some of the bigger subscription businesses and, and, or software businesses. And you're, you're typically finding similar products every single day, you're finding non-relevant products, or you're finding these lists and lists of products and you just, you, you kind of don't know where to start. Um, and we've kind of shifted that onto its head and, and made it a much more, uh, keyword driven uh, process where we're literally showing you products that Amazon sellers are typing into Amazon right now that they're looking for. And it's very fluid. And every day, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different products there, ways that you can filter it. Um, and, and you'll see as you use that tool, you know, within 20 seconds, you'll have four or five ideas that you've never, ever thought of. So, um, but it's about, you know, how do you use data to really find that right product idea? And then how do you move it from that to, obviously sourcing the product. We've just launched a brand new 
partnership with Alibaba.com, they, mm. they, they've realized that private label and, and the brand side of e-commerce is, is a place where they want to be and connect with. And they put out a pitch to a bunch of different software companies that, that ultimately they ended up choosing us for that. Um, and, and they partnered with us to help our customers find the best of the best suppliers um, for, for, uh, for creating private label businesses. So, you know, it's going through that process. And then obviously the listing and the launch focus, which launching is, is absolutely critical these days and, and being able to understand what keywords do I compete on? Where are my competitors uh, competing on? Where do they rank? How do I actually visually see where the pockets and the opportunities are? And how do I target the right keywords that I think I can actually hit to get to page one? That is something you can absolutely solve right now before you even have a product. And it's really important to do that up front to give you the confidence to launch your product. So it takes you through that and then obviously scaling. So uh, it touches on every single aspect, but really, you know, fundamentally using that business lens to say, this is what you need to do at every phase to be confident that you're going into this market with the right product, with the right strategy that can absolutely be a, a, a million dollar product down the road. You know, I've been, I've been talking with a few brands recently who are writing a wave, right? And they never could have, well, maybe they could have. I don't think that they were prepared for how much volume they were going to see online. Um, and they remind me almost of like fidget spinners, how those just went crazy. Um, but they're, they're maintaining, right? They're, they're growing in these categories and they're not even like, they're not even doing a lot of advertising and they're just, they're crushing it, right? Um, I'm wondering how much of the broader market does somebody need to be in tune with while they're using the Zon Guru tool to really make a good decision that's going to have long-term value? Right? How do I make sure that I pick a product that's not just good on Amazon, but that's good for the broader market and is going to you know, catch these, these waves, so to speak? Yeah, it's a, re- it's a really good question. And I think the answer is yes. Fundamentally, you want to be able to understand the category and the markets. And, and what's, what's good is that we have the ability to historically look back. 20, you, know, you have 2020 hindsight, which <laughs> is you know, we have the ability to track products um, and their sales and, and their market dynamics. So you can kind of, you can see when did this category come into play? When did it become popular? Uh, you know, how is that looking potentially moving forward? So there are tools available within our suite that, that allow you to look at market dynamics um, and importantly, your, your top competitors, right? So if I was about to launch a product, how have my competitors been faring and what do their historical sales look like? So you have that access but I think that the, the overall answer I would give on that, and this is a really important point for, for people who are selling products on Amazon, is that it's not about the one, you know, one golden hitter, the one product that you launch that, that gets you to the million dollar. Yes, absolutely. There are those cases and there's plenty of them. But I think you should be approaching with, with the idea that this is, the, this is the first of many or the second of many or the third of many. And, you know, when you look at our data, of our sellers on aggregate, um, those people who, and it's pretty obvious, but those people who launched one product versus those people who launched two or three or four or five um, are, are, you know, the people who've launched the five or more are in a way better position sales wise than the people who've launched one, right? So the, the idea, and, and even from my experience of selling on Amazon, the fundamental mistake is to launch one and just focus on that one and trying to make the best out of that. Yes, get it going but then focus on your next and focus on your next. And once you have three or four or five, even with lower sales than potentially one great product, your sales number is going to be higher um, and you're going to do much better. And more importantly, if you're in different categories, you're diversifying your risk. And we're just seeing that, especially in the time right now, um, those people who've diversified and on different categories are just crushing it in, in some and maybe hurting in others. But um, that's the important lesson to learn is, the momentum of scale is, is launching more than one. So there's, there's kind of two, um, there's two concerns that a lot of uh, these newer sellers bring, bring to me. Everyone, you know, they call in, they're like, Hey, I like, I want to sell on Amazon. I have a small bag of money. And I'm, I'm just looking to get started on this. The first one is they have no idea how much they should invest, how many units they should buy, what their MOQ should be. They have no idea how to deal with manufacturers. Um, and the other big concern that folks have is, 
um, they're going to get into a market where these bigger brands are starting to migrate to and they're hiring agencies like buy box experts, these big brands to just do it, right? They don't like, they don't have to learn it. They just hire somebody and they use their big bag of money and just knock all the smaller sellers out. So I get that concern all the time. Um, on those two fronts, right? The amount of money and then the, the concern with big brands, what would you encourage um, new Amazon sellers or newer Amazon sellers to, to do and, um, and how, to, how to view this situation and how to overcome these, these obstacles that they're facing? Yeah, I think, I think that's a very real problem, especially you know, in 2020 and beyond. I think you know, you big brands are coming in and you know this as much as I do and, and spending massive amounts on PPC just to knock everyone else off page one you know, or launching massive amounts of variations to just push everyone else off of page one. Um, and my, my, my answer to that is, is one, pick a niche within a niche. So use data, use the right tools, you're not looking for a commodity that is on page one that is competing against massive big brands. You're looking for that niche within a niche, something different, uh, you know, and, and again, to that point of like, if that product is, do, if you pick that niche and it's doing $10,000 a month, once you launch three or four or five of those, you know, there's your $50,000 a month business. That's, that's where your growth is going to come. So it's a long-term sustainable business um, where you are differentiating through, through product differentiation, you're creating a moat for your brands. That's where you want to be. Um, so it is a niche within a niche that you need to find and you need data to be able to unveil those product ideas for you. And, and that's what we specialize in. Um, and in terms of launch, launch budget, that's a, that's, that's a really good question. And it's actually, it's, it's part, we have this, this niche radar, which is like, it's, it's a, it's a rainbow. And one of the, uh, one of the, the, the arms of that rainbow or the, you know, pieces of that rainbow is uh, the, a launch budget rating. So it'll say, how much money do you actually need from a, from a cost of goods perspective to launch this product and sell at the velocity of page one or whatever you're aiming for hmm. um, to actually get there? And it will give you a launch budget figure. So you can, you can figure out, okay, wow, this project, product looks great, but I need $60,000 in capital to actually compete. Because if I want to compete, I need to compete. I can't be sitting in the background, right? Or, right. or is it a product that I need $10,000 for? So we, we have that aspect. And then I think the, the other one is we, we go further than that. We actually go down to you actually coming up with your launch strategy. You need to understand which keywords you can own and how many sales I would be doing on a daily basis based on those keywords. And once you can figure that out, you can very quickly understand how much, uh, you know, product you need, how much launch budget you need, Perfect. how much PPC budget you need, all of those kind of aspects. So it's really important to understand what keywords am I going to own over my competitors when I launch and how do, and what do I, what budget do I need to put behind that to actually own it? Now, as, as somebody's getting started, I've noticed that um, they'll download a software and then, you know, maybe they just get kind of overwhelmed. Um, I'm sure you've seen this, right? Someone will download it and then maybe six weeks later, they're just like, oh, like this is too much work. I don't really know. Like I can't trust myself because I'm, I'm not really, I mean, if I have a list of products, I have to pick one. Like some people don't trust their gut enough. Um, do you guys, do you guys do consulting with uh, users, uh, users of Zonguru? Uh, do you send them to consultants? How do you, um, you know, kind of, guide them along the the path of using a software and get is getting started on Amazon or are there videos that you guys use? How do people get started? Yeah, it's so, so number one, we have a, a, a very integrated partnership with reliable education and reliable education is, is probably the best education course for Amazon sellers out there. And, it, and it's, it's, it's owned and, and founded by uh, my, my partner, Adam Hudson. And uh, they focus on, on that exact thing, which is how do you create a business on Amazon um, and, and coaching around that. So, um, you know, we, we're very um, integrated with them. Uh, but on the other side, as a software company, especially in our space, education just comes along with, with, with what our business, right. And what we're in. So, um, we have consultants, we have an extremely dedicated and passionate, um, support team. Um, and, and what's great about not only our support team, but, uh, in general is, is that we, 
we advocate for our team starting their own Amazon businesses. So a lot of them have their own Amazon businesses, which um, you know, just allows them to be experts and to be able to relate and to help other sellers get there, which is, which is, uh, which is important. Yeah. And I understand you as Zone Guru um, will give your, will give your employees uh, some type of loan to get started. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, we do. So when, when I, when I, I guess the, the way to give you a little bit of background on that is, is that one of the, exciting things about being a founder and a, and a CEO of a company is that you get to build a little family, right? Of people that work for you, for your company. And one thing that is gratifying for me, but also very important to me is uh, giving the recognition that people who dedicate them, them, their, themselves to Zongu and the effort they're putting in is that it's also time of their life, right? That they are giving to Zongu and it's important to, to give them the space to not only excel at, at Songu and do incredible, amazing work, but also the space to, to excel in life in general, outside of work, their passions um, and, and whatever else that they, that they need from life. And, and that just falls so nicely into, into the idea that um, an Amazon business, whether it's your main hustle or your side hustle, absolutely, if done in the right way, can scale you to incredible wealth and freedom, right? And I absolutely believe in that. And I think it's a, a perfect marriage, obviously, with, with, with Zongu um, to be able to give everyone an opportunity to create that business. And not only, you know, it's a win-win because not only will they build this amazing business that will give them um, wealth over time, but, <laughs> but at the same time, they, they uh, you know, they, they, can bring that expertise into their software. And it's just been amazing to see uh, as over the years, our team has, has started their own businesses, how excited they get by it, but also how that wealth of knowledge goes into every single piece of software that we develop. Um, because, you know, as a, de- and by the way, developers are like the best at creating <laughs> Amazon businesses. They just know how to take action. They know how to use the data and they, they grind you know, kind of like, they, 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 to some degree, they're emotionally ag- agnostic to certain things and they just look at the numbers and they nail it. So um, it's just crazy to see how good they are at it um, and how they access data. So um, yeah, we, we, we give um, a, a loan to, to any Zongu, um, to any Zongu teammates uh, to start their own Amazon business. And, and, and the idea is that after a year, if they haven't made money on their business, they don't have to pay us back anyway. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Incredible. Um, well, John, it sounds like there's a, there's a lot going on. How, how can people get in touch with the Zonguru team? Where should I send everybody? Uh, Zonguru.com. Obviously, we have a great support team there. You can connect with us there uh, at Zonguru on any social channel. Our Instagram channel is purely dedicated to product ideas and inspirations. It's basically like a product feed of ideas, what's hot, what's not, how to differentiate. So definitely follow us on Instagram. Uh, you know, Facebook, uh, all of those platforms are available. Um, and if they want to get in touch with me, just hit support and I'll be happy to connect with them as well. So, um, perfect. And, and you guys have a start free trial button. So go to zonguru.com, check it out, go try it out and you'll be on your way to, uh, to a million dollar business. John, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the buy box experts podcast. Be sure to click subscribe, check us out on the web, and we'll see you next time.